Hello, this is Rodney Haynes again with Haynes Sprinkler and Drainage, and today I want to talk to you about uh, rain and freeze sensors. We had a really good rain the other day, thank the good Lord, and uh, I did see some sprinkler systems that come on, and I often will drive out of my driveway sometimes, or in neighborhoods, after a rain the day before and see sprinkler systems on, and it really don't need it. Save your money, save some water, we need it desperately. Uh, and allow your rain and freeze sensor to work for you. If you don't have one, you need to get one. Um, but what, what they are, if you're not familiar with them, it basically what it does when it rains, it shuts off your sprinkler system. And also when it freezes, it will shut off your sprinkler system. Uh, and just on a note with that, in December through about February, March, even up to June here in our area, we recommend shutting off your sprinkler system anyway. But if by chance you have it on, you're watering something, that just needs to be watered, possibly flowers or a uh, new landscape or something like that, and you have that free sensor on, and you get a temperature usually below 38, then it'll shut it off so it doesn't come on the next day when it's scheduled. So keep that in mind. It's for cutting it off when you have rain and cutting it off when you have freezing temperatures. Uh, and a lot of controllers, and maybe we'll see that in a little bit, you can set a delay on it, so meaning if it rains, you can set a delay for one day, two days, up to seven days, or even more in some cases, where it will delay that long before it allows it to come back on. But if you are wondering if you have a rain or a freeze sensor, or a combination really, they're both in one, uh, in most cases. Uh, nowadays, they're all combined. Uh, if you look out around your house on your fence, uh, this one is in the backyard of this home. A lot of times they will also be on, on the gutter and usually they're on the fence on the side, kind of like what this one is, or on the side of the garage. A couple of little tricks uh, to think about is you really want it on the side, maybe even the east side, where it can get the sunlight. So when the sun comes up in the morning, uh, it's getting some the sun to uh, warm it up a little bit. Um, um, if it's covered with trees or covered with shrubbery or something like that then it's not going to work as well uh, if at all in some cases so make sure it's out in the open where it's exposed to the temperatures and to the rain uh, so it works properly but basically on this one um, it's got a little piece up here at the top that basically you just turn if i were to turn this i don't want to do it yet because i don't know what he's you, you, you can't see it but there's little numbers on there that measure anywhere from an eighth of an inch to a half of an inch you can see it on this one this is a different brand if it were on the fence it looks something like this all right and that's your weather station um, if you see right here you can see one eighth inch one half inch one fourth and three quarter and you basically just adjust it uh, to where you want it so in other words if you set it on one eighth inch then when you get one eighth inch of rain it's going to shut off the system if you set it on three quarters of an inch, when you get three quarters of an inch, it will shut off the system. Be careful with that in the heat of the summer. If you've got it set on one eighth of an inch and you can get a drizzle, it might shut it off when really you need to be watering the next day. So just kind of watch that and be careful on your settings there. I usually set it at about a half inch and go with that. There is a battery that are in these. So you want to check and see where they are. Most of them are, uh, some will have a nine volt battery and some will have a lithium battery in there. Just find where that is. We change them out twice a year, recommended. They should last longer than that, but for the cost, go ahead and replace it. Um, these are wireless. They're not wired to the controller. So they work really well wherever you locate them within about a hundred, some cases maybe 200 feet from your controller. Uh, they'll work just fine. A lot of controllers these days have built-in sensors in them, and that's fine, but they're usually reading from a weather station that may be five years or five uh, miles from your house, eight miles from your house. They're typically uh, set at a school or at an airport, and you may be reading from that, and they're okay, but I like a local weather station at my house, which is what you see here. That way you're getting an accurate reading of what's going on at your house. Uh, to give the information and the data to your controller to tell it what to do. Uh, so that's a rain and, and weather station. I would get them now. Uh, we're going to have a rainy season this fall, typically. And then, of course, we're coming up on winter time uh, for those freezing temperatures. So give us a call if you need help with the weather station at your home.